I think the single best choice that President Trump could make to fill this vacancy is, is Senator Mike Lee. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mike Lee would be faithful to the Constitution and Bill of Rights. GOP Senator Mike Lee on the president's Supreme Court shortlist, and he joins us now to weigh in on this. Good morning to you. Good morning. Congratulations on even being considered. You have just had such a successful career. Your brother is also on the list. He's a Utah Supreme Court Justice Thomas Rex Lee. Your mama did a great job raising you boys. Um, <laughs> that's wonderful. What are your thoughts? When, when you found out yesterday that, that Justice Kennedy was stepping down and you are being considered for this high position? Well, first of all, I admire Justice Kennedy. He's someone who has devoted more than 30 years of service to the U.S. Supreme Court. I haven't agreed with every decision he's made, but he, I do respect the fact that he stood behind federalism and separation of powers, uh, religious liberty, and so many other things that are important. Look, I, I, I'm someone who's been watching the Supreme Court uh, since I was 10 years old. I started at that age watching Supreme Court arguments just for fun, going with my dad to the court. And uh, so I'm, I'm honored even to be considered for something like this. Right. Of ultimately, this is the president's choice, and I'm sure he'll make the right decision. And the reason you went with your dad at the Supreme Court, he was the Solicitor General for the United States, and he argued 59 cases before the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So just that kind of family legacy would be unbelievable. Ultimately, though, uh, I would imagine, Senator, it does come down to how your relationship is with the guy who would nominate you. How are things with the president? I have a good relationship with the president. You know, uh, he and I don't see eye to eye on every issue, but on the whole, I, I've supported his efforts to restore federalism, to restore feder separation of powers. Uh, these are different ways of saying to drain the swamp. And I think he and I see eye to eye on uh, most things when it comes to the Supreme Court of the United States. So again, I've got confidence that he can, he can make the right decision, especially given that he's going to be focusing on this list. Mm -hmm. He chooses from that list. I think the Senate will confirm someone from that list. Senator, I'm going to give you a scenario because we're in the world of anything's possible and everything's unprecedented. You get the call, hey, uh, you're going to be the nominee. Being that you have such a slim margin in the Senate, depending on John McCain, especially because of his condition, what happens to your vote if you're up for the nomination? You need your vote to win it. Do you vote for yourself? Are you allowed to do that? Uh, yeah, my understanding is that that's what the Senate rules allow and that you're still a senator until you're no longer a senator. You're still a senator at the moment that you're being considered for something like that. Wow. wow. So you'd go, by the power vested in me, I vote for me. That's my understanding. And what, what about if uh, the president picked your brother and not you? How awkward is that going to be around the, <laughs> uh, the table on Thanksgiving? Oh, it would be fantastic. First of all, my brother is a terrific jurist. He's a textualist, originalist, after the pattern of Justice Alito and, and Justice Thomas, Justice right. Gorsuch, and Justice Scalia. Uh, and I'd also really enjoy the opportunity to grill him as a member of the Senate Judiciary <laughs> yeah, Committee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you it. were seven years yeah. old, I remember. That's so interesting the way you describe your brother, because I describe my brother as a Yankee fan. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. A little bit different. Uh, but, Senator, I got to ask you, in the, big, in the big picture right now, there's a lot of people out there who are moderate, independent, or Democrat who said, goodbye same-sex marriage, goodbye Roe v. Wade. You're a legal scholar. Uh, should they be worried? Well, look, all of those issues involve cases that have been decided previously by the Supreme Court. It's uh, one thing for them to assume that a Republican appointee might come at those issues from a different worldview uh, as a matter of first impression. They have to take into account the doctrine of stare decisis, which is a doctrine that generally puts the Supreme Court on a path of following precedent. Uh, so it, they, they can't know for sure how any one of those issues is going to turn out and whether any one of those cases might be overturned. All right. Uh, well, for now, Senator Lee, we'll call you Senator <laughs> for now. Thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all Thank the best. You.